Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I'm Jan Claudner, and I want to welcome you all to this uh, October meeting. Bill and I are very excited that you're here today at the Clubs of Prestonwood, the Creek. And we also want to welcome everybody on Zoom. Y'all can't see them on Zoom. Uh, I can, but we'll get a pan shot here so everybody can wave at some point in time. We'll be getting started in just a few minutes. But first, a couple of things I'd like to uh, go over. For those of you who are on Zoom, not anybody here, uh, your mics are muted. Uh, make sure that they stay muted. Uh, and please make sure that you, you, if you're using a camera on your phone, those of you who are on Zoom, uh, don't be making breakfast, cleaning out the garage, walking the dog, and doing some other things that you would not want other people to see. That's happened. Uh, if you have any comments to make, use the chat function. Free, please do that. You can either chat with everybody or just somebody personal. Put your questions up there, and we'll try to get the, uh, those questions answered. And uh, also be sure to stick around after the meeting because we usually have a few minutes of networking. So let's get the show on the road. For the past 30 years, successful guys has had the best of the best of the best of these people come not to be paid, but because of the people in the room. The people who found found I need. Thirty years on the third Wednesday of every month, Success North Dallas has had the best of the best. I guess we're going to have an echo, so we're just going to start this thing, huh? You're not ready yet. That's Jan. For the past thirty. All right. Now that you saw the video, live from the clubs of Crestwood Creek, <laughs> my longtime friend and S and D business partner who is now recovering from major back surgery and he might be on meds, Bill Wallace. <laughs> wow, our second meeting back. And uh, I, I missed you all so, so, so very much. You know, Albert Einstein once said, a life lived for others is the only life worth living. And that really defines what Success North Dallas is all about. We've often said we're not here to change the world. We're here to make one genuine difference, one interaction at a time, because truly that's what leads to greatness. And I'm Bill Wallace, and uh, in March of 1988, my mentor, Herb Kelleher, told me, Wallace, get out. Come back when you figure out why I should do business with you. And that's what caused me to start Success North Dallas. We looked at everything people did not like in networking, and we eliminated everything, the card pushers, the pitch bookers. There was one thing we didn't eliminate, <clears throat> and that was women. Because in 1988, it was not cool to have women in networking. And so we broke the mold. We created transformational change through disruption. And I didn't realize, we, we made the group 30% women from day one. <clears throat> and I did not realize the impact of what Herb had said when he told me, I gave them hot pants and booze, which is how Southwest Airlines started. You give them women in networking. But 25 years later, we had our anniversary, only luncheon we've ever done. One of my proudest moments, 440 people, Ambridge Hotels paid for the whole thing. Ross Bro Senior Welcome, Boone Pickens hosted. We had the CEOs of Fleur, USAA, 7-Eleven, BNSF, all on the dais. And we had, if you can believe it, honored Nancy Lieberman. And I looked out at the room and it was 50% women. So ladies, you're why we're still here 31 years later, 32 today. This is our 32nd anniversary actually today. And uh, 
when I started it, I named it Success North Dallas because I wanted to sell insurance in North Dallas. I thought it'd last three to five years. I thought I'd pay my dues and somebody upstairs got a hold of it. And now this group has generated 99 companies, over a thousand jobs, 60 published authors, and seven, soon to be eight, Ernst & Young Entrepreneurs of the Year. So you humble me, you honor me, and I thank you for being here today. So give yourselves a hand because our speakers, like the two today that flew in from South Dakota, they don't come here because of me. They come because of the people in this room. They come because of the people and on the internet. And I've welcomed you all that have started these companies, created these jobs, and made this meaningful difference in the lives of so, so, so many others. And a point of uh, personal, I've received cards, I've received letters, I've received emails, I've received phone calls from so, so very many of you. At one point I had over 250 in a day just reaching out because you see on the 21st, I had major back surgery. I was in the hospital for six days. I had to go back for a day due to swelling. And the love and compassion that came out of this room far beyond anything I could ever imagine. So humbly, I thank you, I love you, and I'm honored to be here. So when we talk about Success North Dallas, we talk about the logo. And the logo is what we all aspire to, success. But it's the interconnecting C's, those two C's that connect. That's how we do it, connecting the right people for the right reasons at the right time. And that's been the hallmark of this group for all these many, many, many years. Uh, membership, it's simple. Be a success in your own eyes. We have no right to define what success is for you. Honor your commitments. Let's go back to the handshake and be a giver. It's all about our fellow men and women. And our website, go take a look at that. It's brand new, We're done by RP1. And as we look at the website, all of you out there in virtual land and here, uh, I wanna welcome our new members. I wanna welcome our new virtual members. And I wanna tell you that what we've got coming up going into 2021 is it's unbelievable. We've got some great speakers coming and we're gonna have some fun. Respecting COVID-19, mask or no mask, that's up to you. But if you're around somebody that's uncomfortable, please put your mask back on. And so those are kind of the rules of the game. I wanna thank, this is not a team of one, this is a team of many. Jan Claudner over here running the Zoom. He's been with me since this group was six months old. Uh, Michelle Pearson outside, Taking care of all that is also the senior partner at Windsor Morgan, and they're putting on a military pitch day. They've got 28 stars coming, generals. Every branch of the military, all their procurement people will all be on a virtual event for two days. So if you want to pitch to them, see Michelle afterwards. I think there's a few places left. Uh, we had, as we kicked it off two weeks ago, Richard Branson. So it's been an unbelievable event. Uh, Dean Lindsay and Melanie Murph always helped me. Casey Haston, Casey Wave back there, VIP. You're taping your 68th podcast, is that right, today or tomorrow? This afternoon. This afternoon. So I remember when this was just, do you think I can do it? Do you think I can do it? She's with VIP and just great stuff. Uh, Tammy Barrier's off having uh, her daughter's baby. They're in the hospital right now inducing. She said to tell you all hi. Misty, where are you? Misty, take a picture. Misty Hoyt Photography, she's been with us just doing great things. And then of course we have Jeff Crilly, Real News PR, Chris Gambrea. Uh, we couldn't do this without you all. We've used their studios when we were virtual. Uh, they do all of our taping and uh, I don't know how many years, 10, 12, 15, oh my gosh. He called me up and said, I, I was told if I wanna to write a book in Dallas, I need to know you. And the book was called Free Publicity. Now, it's just a short story. That's when he was a journalist. He was a reporter. They wouldn't let him speak for money, but he turned the books into currency. And when that currency got to a certain point, he opened uh, 
company called Real News PR before there was fake news. He now has eight studios. And we'll be over there taping this afternoon with our speakers. Jeff, I just, you and Chris, I can't tell you thanks enough. Uh, so many things. And then the Marriott Forum Hotel, Aaron Cook, I don't know if she made it this morning. They helped put up our other time guest. And then Lucinda Ruck, Lucinda's at home. She's our gatekeeper, letting people in. Uh, and uh, Kathy Klatterbaugh with Twitter. These are wonderful ladies. I, yeah, they, they keep this thing running and they keep this thing happy. So I, I say thank you to all these and the social media aspect, it's a huge opportunity. So you've got our hashtags up there coming up. Uh, don't hesitate to use them and do that. And a few people in the news, we always do in the news and anybody running for public office, I think they're probably all out at the polls today. Uh, Lincoln Experience, John Robertson, are you here? John won two tickets to the Cowboys game. That would be him. Uh, we'll send out another email this afternoon. Go to the Lincoln Experience at the Star, test drive a Lincoln. You'll be put in the bowl for a drawing for two Cowboys tickets. This is Success North Dallas only. And you'll also receive a $50 gift certificate to Fan Experience, which is the Cowboy gift store out there. So it's a great opportunity to win a couple of tickets. We're doing two more drawings over the next two months. So Lincoln Experience, I wanna thank you. Evelyn, are you here? I don't think so. No, I think she said she couldn't. City Central partnered with Rosewood Properties in the Rosewood Tower, and they're opening their new co-working space there. They'll be managing that for Rosewood, and that's number four, number, number four, five for them now. My goodness, it's great. Uh, Mark Berg, I know you're out there on the internet. Hello, hello, hello. And then uh, S&D Young Executives. We've got a luncheon coming up, turning crisis into opportunity. What is the date of that lunch panel? That is uh, October 28th. October 28th. See Andrew up here afterwards. If you have any questions about a young executives or if you know a young executive or if you happen to have sired a young executive that might be somebody that wanted to be the opportunity or also if you know a young executive who's out of work bring them in too we'll take care of them and then on the uh hey bill yes bill, do you see the sign up here uh-huh i threw that in there you might want to give a shout out to bronwyn allen who is being voted on if you're in addison go to that website and give addison a vote or bronwyn allen a vote for ceo and that's high profile staffing readers awards and a thank you to Bronwyn Allen and Kent Barner for helping with our young executives. Kent's with CIO suite and Bronwyn Allen is the president of high profile staffing and they've sponsored our young executives. C-suite. We do a lot with C-suite. You all know that tomorrow, 430 to six, we're having a virtual Lone Star Council happy hour and see me afterwards. Let, give me your card. I'll send you the link to that but we'll have 30, 40 people on that. And this thing is growing like crazy. You know, we've been involved in C-suite for a long, long time. And the American Future Series, Michelle, are you in here? Anything to comment on there? Nope. AFF, A. American Future Series, AFS-SND, gets you a free admission. Very simple. Go to the website, it's American Future Series. And like I said, there'll be 28 stars there. It'll be unbelievable. And then finally, we're gonna to return to town hall meetings. We're gonna to return to town hall meetings on the 12th. I'll tell you a little bit more about that later. And a final thank you out to our partner members. We're all the partner members that we have in the room, please stand. Uh, 25 years of doing this, we ask some people to come alongside of us financially so we can keep our dues down and we can keep this going. I'm going to just slip around the room. Jeff, Jeff Curley, Real News PR, Phil Barnett, Barnett Energy. He was, he was the first one that believed in us. And Phil, I can't thank you enough for that. Neil Medwin over here, Miralux. Uh, technology support organization, managed services as well as cyber and physical security, reach out to them. 
They're there to serve you. And ISS Charities Cleaning for a Reason, Debbie McAdams, uh, I can't say enough. And Baker Tilly, I'm sorry, my name. Say it loudly. Now, Alex, I know you, Jeffrey, I don't know you. And I think we have uh, one last one to introduce. And Marie, if you would come up here with Denise. This is our newest partner member. Marie. Now, Marie likes to talk a lot, so we're only going to give her 30, 60 seconds. But introduce yourselves and your team. Um, I'm Marie Diaz. I'm uh, so happy to be here. And he gave me 30 seconds, so that's enough for I'll me. Give you huh? 60. <laughs> um, I own a company called Pursuit of Excellence. We celebrated our 25th year anniversary last year on my birthday, December. Um, and um, the only reason why I'm bringing that up is because I believe that this man here resembles so much um, Pursuit of Excellence because when I came up with that name, it wasn't really about the company, it was what are we doing to pursue excellence in our life? And he is just so phenomenal with <clears throat> everything that he's done and what he gives. So anyway, enough about me. Yeah, tell me about <laughs> let this me, spa. Yes, so let me introduce Denise. She is Denise Nolan and Connie, she is our esthetician. So my newest venture is called Bienestar Mia. And what that means is total wellness. So mind, body, and soul. So Denise is the mind about that. And she has such a wonderful heart and, and oh my gosh, I just cannot tell you enough about her, but I'm gonna give the mic to her so she can tell you a little bit about herself. Good morning, everyone. Um, Denise Nolan. Um, I don't like the spotlight, but uh, since I'm here, I better speak. Um, we started Bienestar Mia for, to help people. So we're doing everything from regenerative medicine. It's all about uh, correction and prevention. And we also cater to, you know, state-of-the-art um, stem cell products that will help you look and feel better. So look forward to having everybody. We're giving away a $50 gift certificate for anybody in here today that wants to come and try our services. So thank you. And this is Connie. Good morning, I'm Connie Braden Tynan and I work, first of all, I have to say, I'm so blessed that I'm working with these two ladies. I learned so much. I've been doing this for many, many years, but they have taught me something more, more deeper than just, you know, make money and, and just be there doing services. They are offering a great, great new adventure in treatments that is stem cells. So please come to visit us. We want to treat you. Thanks, Bill. They want to love on you. Thank you. And by the way, I have pictures of uh, Marie in a super woman outfit. And uh, Denise, I can't even tell you about what she was wearing. But they had a birthday party. I'll take care of this. Turn this off. They had a birthday party at uh, 12 Cuts last week for Denise's birthday. So Denise, happy birthday. And with that, we always do a quote. And I thought this quote pretty well summed up a lot of things. Never stop seeking out your dreams. Never let anyone stand in your way, especially not yourself. And that's by John Bayless from his upcoming book, Rapid ROI. But never stop seeking out your dreams. Never let anyone stand in your way, especially yourself. And that describes our speakers today. It describes them beautifully. We have two fantastic ladies that have flown in from South Dakota to be with us today. And I'm gonna introduce both of them. And then I'm gonna ask them to come up and take over. And it's a pleasure. I've, I've been with these ladies in San Francisco, New York, uh, where, I don't know, South Dakota, where else have we been, who knows? And this, I met them through C-Suite and Hero Club. But Dr. Rachel Headley, senior partner of the Rose Group International, this lady knows how to get things done. She's been in the trenches dealing with those unspoken, those unspoken conversations, the barriers to team goals, the barriers to success, and figuring out how to achieve seemingly impossible goals. As she rose through the ranks at a global satellite mission from intern to satellite scientist, 
to operational science officer. Think a little company called NASA. She managed big projects, united diverse stakeholders. She guided teams through change, led complex and groundbreaking achievements. She believes that internal experience, internal experience, IX of an organization is a leadership choice. Partnering with Meg Mankey, they developed a critical and new practical IX leadership framework, which allows you to actually solve pro problems, solve them within your teams, address those always there generational issues, guide people through big changes, accomplish your most ambitious goals. And she's a TEDx speaker, not just any TEDx speaker, audiences of 12,000 and more. The critical and new practical applications that she brings forward. It's made her a Forbes Coaches Council contributor. She's on the board of trustees for the South Dakota University, a Mensa, PhD scientist, certified project management professional. And I like this, global citizen, curl singer, and art patroness. I don't know if she could do much more. And then we've got Meg Mankey. And Meg is her senior partner as well. And she has experience, multiple years experience, leading through transition from major changes in highly regulated industries through $100 million acquisitions. She's refined skills and understanding people carrying them through change. Her studies in organizational psychology and mastery and leadership concepts. That ensures her that people are taken care of, period, the end. People are taken care of. She has a passion for helping others to realize their full potential, breaking down social and personal barriers and changing, changing their story. A ranch kid in Western South Dakota where she still puts in a hard day's work. I can only imagine. I've talked to her on several different places at that ranch. Uh, ranch life gave her a stick to itiveness, a passion for family and outdoors, and maybe, maybe just a touch of stubbornness. Meg's an avid runner, an advocate of the well-rounded education of youth. She's a youth advocate, a major supporter, and I love this one, of finding humor in all things. Ladies and gentlemen, help me welcome Dr. Rachel Headley and Meg Mankey to our lecture. Jan, I need your mic. I'm so glad you all are here. Oh. You're not going to break me here. There's one for you there. She's bossy. So she, she's always bossy. I am the boss. She's the boss. It's different. She's bossy. Are we to sit? No, they put chairs here like we're going to sit. Oh, yeah. we're not okay. going to sit. All right. Great. Clearly, a man put chairs here because what girl, what woman has a skirt on and wants to climb onto this right. chair? Right. I thought you can already see enough of my leg. If I sit down, <laughs> this is going to be. I mean, this this is what did what did you call it? Uh, alcohol and booty shorts. Uh, I don't know. Hot, hot pants. pants. Excuse hot me. Pants. <laughs> yeah, that's the hot pants. Hot pants, peanuts, and booze. Right here, folks. You get it right that's here. It. At seven a.m. or whatever. At seven a.m. Right. Well, we are in Texas after all. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. Well, Still good going. thing you guys don't have our governor. It would be a mess. That's right. It'd be. Well, all right. Are we going to start? I'm going to start. All right. Yeah, I'm going to start. Jan, Jan's the boss. We're going to we're going to stay on this slide for a second. Uh, I want to thank Bill and all of you for having us. This is our first trip out of South Dakota in an airplane since March. So it's it was quite a, uh, an adventure, but we love traveling. We love meeting you. We love being here. So thank you for being here. Thank you to the Zoom members for attending. Hi to all of our folks that are uh, being Hi, Shelly. Our, our GM, Shelly, is for sure in here. there. And um, all, for all of our folks that are here and getting to meet you and Success North Dallas as an organization for the first time, um, I'm sure they're um, really excited to know a little bit more about you and what you guys do in the community. So uh, Meg's gonna kick us off um, with her a little bit of her story. Yep, oh, now you can, it, that, yep, okay, that'll work. Thanks, Jan. So uh, I grew up on a ranch uh, in Western South Dakota. There's not a lot of fanfare about that, except for people tell me that there is, and it's big and exciting and all the things. Rachel's always scolding me to not downplay my uh, background. 
Um, but I feel like here in Texas, where I've seen more boots actually um, in this state than I've in one room than I've seen in South Dakota in one room, you guys would call absolute, are we allowed to swear? Yes. Bullshit on me. <laughs> I told you that ranching was some big fancy adventure. I mean, it's not fancy. It's, uh, it's dirty, uh, as you probably all well know. But it did teach me some really important lessons. Uh, one of them, of course, is to be stubborn. Um, one of them is to not give up. And um, just like the quote that Bill brought up, one of them was to never stop believing in yourself. And that to be an entrepreneur, it was just, there were gonna be moments that were hard and that were not gonna be fun. Um, and my parents were very supportive of that. Uh, don't think your whole life is gonna be fun, but make fun of everything that you do. And so I, I was very fortunate to grow up the way I grew up um, and learn how to appreciate and respect the land and where all of our uh, resources come from and uh, learn how to be tough, tough enough um, to, to be in business actually. And so that's kind of why I decided to uh, go to, people asked me, I went to Creighton University in Omaha, Nebraska, and people said, well, gosh, that was kind of a long ways from home for you, and why would you have gone there, and especially since you had a full-ride academic scholarship to an in-state college, and I said, because I wanted to go to the number one business school in the Midwest, and that was it, so that's where I went, uh, and so that also taught me some really important lessons um, about how to be tough, um, and how to, if you're not if you're not one of the fancy kids that grew up in uh, Eden Prairie or Edina, Minnesota, or went to Duchenne uh, Prep High School for girls for Creighton University, that it didn't matter, matter. You could still be a ranch kid from Western South Dakota and be smarter than other people. So uh, that's kind of my startup story. Uh, mine's not quite as fancy as Rachel's, all that PhD, Mensa Science. She grew up in a very different way uh, through business than I did, but. Mm, that's um, for sure. She's lucky because I just never gave up. And then eventually she met me. I know. It was a turning point in my life, I can tell you, in many ways, in many ways. Um, well, one of the things I want to point out in Meg's photo of her, so this is branding season, um, still brand. Uh, and I got to go and I just take pictures. My boyfriend's down on the ground wrestling animals that are, can hurt them. It's not my jam, but we jumped into it. But with a little picture in the corner, I, I snuck in here. Meg didn't know I was going to do it. Is, uh, is that she actually came out of gold mining, open pit gold mining, um, and as their HR director slash really involved with operational decision making. So that's, and that happens in the Black Hills of South Dakota, which is how we connected um, in South Dakota. Um, next picture for me, Jan. Um, I, my um, background in um, aerospace was, I was, I grew up on a farm in South Dakota, but, I never had the urge to be my own boss. I saw the struggle of my family. My dad, we moved off the farm in the 80s back when farming uh, destroyed a lot of families. And he became a, a house builder, a general contractor eventually, and was very successful at that. My mother was at the university. And I didn't want to do, I didn't want to have that struggle. I, the lesson I learned was I'm not doing that ever. And so I went on to school. I kind of just stayed in school longer than anyone else and ended up getting a PhD. You're and like Van Wilder. I don't know what that means. I don't know what that means. I'll put, I'll add it to the list of 197 really important American movies you need to watch. Yeah, I don't know, I don't know. Not a pop culture. I was in school, I was busy. Um, I, no, probably not studying, probably just trying to get all the things up. Cause when I went to school, back to the South Dakota work ethic piece. I was actually working full time while I got my PhD program. Well, I did my PhD in two and a half years. So I was working 18 hour days, no kidding, for about two years. And so that does, doesn't always serve you because then you don't get to appreciate the other things in life. But, but during that journey, um, what happened with me was I was sort of geographically trapped. Um, I was in the Black Hills with my ex-husband. We split up. And my, so we had a daughter, she was five. And so when we split up at the same time, I got laid off of my job at the university within about five or six months. I was working for the president of the college. She retired and similar to the White House, a new president brings his own staff or her own staff. So um, uh, the president I worked for retired. I got laid off with the raft of people. 
about three or four months, five months after my divorce was final. So I had to decide what was I going to do in aerospace. There's only a few places you can work. Not a lot of aerospace work going on in the Black Hills of South Dakota. So, but my daughter, my ex-husband was there and I, at five, I didn't want to put my daughter through anything else. So I decided to stay in this tiny little mountain town that we live in of about 10,000 people and start my own company, start doing consulting full time. And so I found myself sort of by accident being a business person. And that's how, that's how I met Meg. So I was a reluctant business owner. I love it now. Um, but there was lots of terrifying moments um, in the early days. Uh, next, please. Oh, yeah, the wind up. So yeah. when Rachel and I met, we were standing sort of, we can't stand close. Arms crossed, looking around the room, and it was a women's conference, right? A women's conference in Western South Dakota is not like you might imagine it here, like professional dresses, you know, suit coats and things. It was women selling Norwex and women selling, uh, let's see, Tupperware, that's kind of an old one, whatever, yeah. makeup, things like yes. that. And these are wonderful, beautiful people, but they're not business professionals necessarily. And at the end of this event every year, they did the conga line. Yes, the conga line. To songs like Working Nine to Five and Girls Just Wanna Have Fun. So Rachel and I are standing here looking around and I go, what in the hell is going on here? Like, where, where are we? This is, this is the premier women's business conference in Western South Dakota. Like, who would, no wonder no one takes us seriously. So. We had this experience and both, I think, walked away and thought, oh, well, there's at least one other person in this whole place that I could maybe sit down and have a bottle of wine with and have some sort of educated conversation with. Great. Well, then a friend of ours, a mutual friend, brought us together uh, to consult him on some stuff that he was doing in his business. And uh, we both thought he was full of it. Uh, but after dinner, Rachel's walking away and she goes, I think we should talk. We should do business together. And at the time, I was the HR manager um, at the gold mine. And I'm like, yes, yeah, sweet. I got a pretty great job, full benefits, really great bonus package. And I, I can almost kind of mail it in. So I'm good. But of course, as Rachel said, I have a bit of an entrepreneurial spirit. So I got home and I thought, oh, God, I could work for myself. I am an expert in lots of things in my own mind. This would be a great opportunity <laughs> to exercise that's, that's the that. Key part in yeah, mind. I'm an expert. Yeah. <laughs> right. Uh, and so anyway, we we connected and started working together. And I mean it was very sort of uh, we weren't in a garage. Uh, like most of the giants who have created technology. I mean we will um, be the Bill Gates and Steve Jobs of our industry right. by the time we're done. Right, but, but we, we were a little bit more progressive. We sat at the kitchen table. Yeah, we did have the kitchen. Yeah, the so kitchen. Uh, bottles, several bottles of wine, lots, lots of, of paper wine. in the garbage uh, in the garbage can. And we started coming up with a, a system. And as we're developing it, and this is you know after Rachel's long days of uh, doing consulting work and my long days of firing people at the mine, uh, we would sit down for hours and our kids were little and so we'd make them play together um and we fed them some sugar and then they crashed Simple. eventually that was handy we didn't ever try the benadryl i just want to say we're good parents. or whiskey or, or whiskey, whiskey. Yeah, yeah right yeah the whiskey yeah. anyway uh so we came up with this system and then we were like well how in the world are we going to tell people about this uh and that was sort of like trying to run after you've just lost both of your big toes. It was ugly. I mean, it was, there was nothing about that that was graceful, uh, but we had to learn how to, how to communicate what we did and why we wanted to do it. And it was really hard. It's hard to just say, well, we're gonna change the way business is done. And people are like, yeah, you're cute. That's what Microsoft did. And that's what Mackenzie Bain does with their consulting. And that's what everybody does. But when you know what you mean is different than anything anybody's ever done, it's really hard to tell people what that is. So we spent a lot of time, had a lot of trial and error yeah. about what that looked like. A lot of time. Um, next slide, please. So one of the things that we did was we wrote it down, which was actually the best thing we probably ever did. We hired a writer so you can actually read this thing and it's not miserable. 
Um, and so we took all, and so what we're focused on, you see IX leadership on the cover. What we're focused on is making work better for everybody in the organization, including the, the, the women and men at the top who are looking at bottom line profitabilities and EBITDAs and all of the pieces of business, but also for the people on the ground who are actually the ones that are making the money for the people that are worried about those numbers. How can we make everybody work harder, better, more effectively and have fun and not be dreading work? We came out of, we came out of leadership roles in companies where we saw people not happy about work and, and talking to other business owners. And if your people aren't happy, your business isn't happy. Your clients aren't gonna come back. Your customers aren't gonna, so many, we were at a technology company call center in Phoenix. And they were telling us about how they'd spent millions of dollars building these training packages and to improve their customer experience. But guess what? Their people were miserable. So it doesn't matter if you have a brilliant customer experience training package, if you can't keep people A, in your company and B, smiling when they answer the phone. So we realized at that moment when we were early on in our career, on our, in our company, that that's the piece, that's the connection that's missing so often. You have a CEO that wants to race forward and do amazing and exciting things with the company and their people are fighting them every step of the way for lots of good reasons and sometimes not so good reasons. How do we help everybody move forward together, especially during COVID and change and chaos and stressful times? How do you keep people engaged and actually working hard for your company? That's the pieces that we help figure out in a different way than anyone else has. So one of our four values for our company is leveraging the energy of people. Don't, they're not just pegs in a hole, right? They're people that can contribute and do contribute every day to the success of your organization. What's the next slide say, Jan? Speaking of Wonder Woman. Speaking of <laughs> bad Christmas attire. So, uh, so as Rachel and I were building out our company and she mentioned one of our values, uh, we, one, of, one of the th things that we do with all of our clients is ask them, what are your values? And they say, oh yeah, hang on that. We have them right here. They're in this file or they're <laughs> hanging on the wall somewhere, or I'm pretty sure everybody's got it, you know, behind them now in their office, in their Zoom, in their Zoom office. Uh, that's not what I'm talking about. Like what is important to you and your company? How do you value your career, your life, the people in your life? How do you value the passion that you have to do what you do? And so we, of course, know that this is important. So we created our own values first. Uh, so one of them is leveraging the energy of your people. Another one for us is giving back. And uh, we do that in lots of different ways, time, talent, and treasures. Um, this actually was a fundraiser for a local fish hatchery uh, in Spearfish, where we live. Uh, it was a, an ice carving contest. Um, we are not ice carvers. <laughs> Clearly not we, we knew that before we started it. We really knew it after we started it, but uh, we actually just started, it's kind of like our business. We just started picking away at this ginormous chunk of ice. We did get to start with the chainsaw this time though. Yeah, and well, that's, that's true. Uh, chainsaws involved. <laughs> yeah, so we started with this ginormous chunk of ice and Rachel goes, what, what, are, we gonna, what are we gonna do? And I'm like, I don't know. She had this Wonder Woman shirt on. I'm like, that looks like it might be kind of easy. <laughs> let's, let's try that. Um, and so it, giving back is a very important part of our business. Um, and, and quite often we find ourselves, as some of you, most of you maybe know, as a bootstrapping entrepreneur, treasure is not anything that you have a lot of. Um, and if you do have it, you keep it because <laughs> it probably is gonna pay your next mortgage. Uh, so a lot of times our giving is our talent. Sometimes it's ice carving, which is not one of our greater talents. Uh, but we, a lot paid, of, we paid for the privilege to make this horrible thing. So yes, it actually worked. Yes, out. we did. Um, but it, a lot of times we we give our time and our talent uh, by way of business therapy is what it ends up being. Therapy sessions. People apologize to us a lot. Gosh, sorry, I didn't mean to turn this conversation into a therapy session. Oh but, my gosh, all the time. Yeah, but it just last night. As a just matter last fact. night. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, that really is what we love to do. We re really love to dig into the challenges that people have in their business, the things you don't want to talk about. One client that we've had recently, um, conversation was around diversity and inclusion. 
and they're really and they're not they're uh, finance in the financial services industry so they don't have any uh, business necessity to be focused on this but they're very interested in focusing on it and so they were trying to we're hosting this strategic executive uh, session for them and and so I said well we're gonna do breakout rooms is in zoom we're gonna do breakout rooms and talk about it and they're all pretty quiet and I said, well, you know, here are the few things we're going to talk about. Still pretty quiet. Does anybody have any questions? No. Are you guys comfortable talking about this? Oh, yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Ooh, yeah, you bet. I said, I'm going to tell you right now that you are not comfortable. You're not comfortable because you don't know the words you can use. And you, you don't know what questions you can ask or can't ask. And so I said, you have to start by developing trust in each other. So that if somebody says something offensive unintentionally, then you have the opportunity to discuss what that means because that's what creates your diversity and inclusion culture. And so these are the kinds of gritty challenges that businesses face every day that we've been told we're not supposed to talk about, we're just supposed to deal with. And those are the kinds of things that we help businesses with. Mm -hmm. All right, next slide, please. So one of the magical things about COVID for us is that everyone else in the whole world caught up with our business model, which is amazing because we have chosen to live in Spearfish, this tiny, adorable little mountain town um, right on the edge of the high plains. And, but we work all over the US and Canada and now we're getting into Europe. And so we had the model of get to know people, help people, but mostly virtually. We, we, we used to fly somewhere for an intensive week, get to know everybody, have the meetings, level set the playing field, and then work remotely the rest of the engagement. Sometimes months, years engagements, that was the model that we had. And we had to sometimes talk people into it. Well, now everyone's like, no, 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 don't come here. Mm -mm, nope, you stay there and we'll figure it out. And so it's been really amazing. These are some of the places in the US that we've worked um, and we currently work have our clients in, have spoken in, have, have um, been really blessed to be able to work across the US with this business model. So we love that we're on Zoom right now and that we're leveraging that technology. So this is, it's a way that you can really expand your reach because when Meg says, we're gonna change the way business gets done, she means around the whole world. We, our goal is in a decade that everyone is doing the things that we're helping people do right now. And so that's why we're trying to get out. We could work in the region. We could stay in the Midwest. We don't have to go out. But after you work in an international industry like gold mining, or for me, my, my project that I worked on Landsat is the largest, longest running civilian operational satellite program in the world, probably the universe actually. And so once you work at that level, it's really hard to think that you wanna play small. You know, it's like coming from Texas and saying, yeah, it's just Texas. It's not that big of a deal, right? Like, it's a big deal. Texas is big. That's what we, we like to play big. We are playing big. And that's part of our mission is to change the way business gets done everywhere, not just in our little geography. So can we just stop because we are in Texas and we can swear and make loud noises and get a big hell yeah <laughs> for that? Everybody? Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Okay. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks. I'm done. That's good. Next slide, please. <laughs> so another one of our values is to have fun. Uh, we, we had a, a photo session with our oh, photographer to update some of our photos. And she said, I think she said to us, give me like the, you know, the, the essence of your relationship and what it really feels like to work together. And Rachel and I both at the same time, unprompted by each other we're both like thank you sometimes <laughs> so uh so we we do like to have fun and sometimes we do drive each other really crazy um but at the end of the day one of the things that we always make sure that we do is find the the humor and the silver lining in everything because our uh, we do therapy all the time with people and we help people with just huge struggles I mean, things that are bringing CEOs to their knees, they're calling and saying, I, I, don't, I don't know what to do. I have no one to talk to. I'm, I'm not sure how to proceed. I don't know how to feel successful anymore. And of course, as you most of you know, for a CEO, that is a pretty weird feeling. 
Um, and so we, we bear a lot of that on our shoulders and on our hearts. So it's really important for us to stay focused on having fun while we're working. And of course, outside of work, also important. Yeah, it's um, one of the, my brain was going to, we have the, a, a client in the UK right now. And so we are basically working two days every day because we get up at 2 a.m. Well, we are at, at usually in meetings uh, occasionally by 2 a.m. in the morning, local time. And then we, of course, have a business to run here. So it's been um, having fun is about the only way that we can stay sane. And uh, the other thing I thought was thinking is don't talk to our Uber driver who got us over here this morning because we were having fun, but <laughs> probably, probably nothing we'd want to share. Uh, our Uber drivers have all the stories. Uh, next slide, please. I think this is our last slide. So the other, our last, uh, our last value is provide the highest, provide the highest value, our, our company values, because of course, the thing that drives us is helping people and the value for, for people is changing the world and changing their life. And so for us, that is the highest and best use of our time. So that's what we're always focused on. The, this logo Helix is built for business. So what we did is we took that book and we had an assessment um, created because all the other assessments you may have heard about are really um, important tools, but they didn't really answer the problem of how do I, if, I, if we had to give all of the people in this room on a project and working together, how do we do it? How do we start? How do we know that, that these folks over here are gonna be the, hey, I need it, let's see, let's get a plan out here. How are we gonna make this happen? And these folks over here are gonna be the ones that are like, we don't need a plan, we'll figure it out as we go. And then all of a sudden those people are driving each other crazy, right? And fighting each other a little bit. Um, and so the, for us, so we had an assessment created so we could evaluate everyone in this room on what's your chaos tolerance? COVID, right? Some people, we've all seen it. Some people are crippling under the uncertainty of the pandemic. And some people, some business owners are like, oh yeah, this is an opportunity. I'm going to take advantage of this. How can I position my company? And so you see business owners on both sides of that, that bridge. And so we evaluate chaos tolerance, both in executives all the way down to the people that are working. And that way we can position and strategize about how to actually implement these new ideas, how to support them through these crazy times. What can we do to help people? How can we keep our people engaged and productive and exceptionally highly performing even under times of high stress? So we have a little assessment that we put together that is married up with our book, um, but we were doing it as bootstrappers did, a lot of very manually through um, tools that were a little off the shelf that didn't quite fit what we'd like. So we've invested in an online platform called Helix and in order to uh, bring this to a much bigger group. I mean, we I'd said our global ambitions, right? Um, and so we can't do those, we can't make that global ambition happen to scale um, on off the shelf software. So we had this created, we, we partnered up with Brainbox Labs, Chris Niccolo in Toronto, Canada, one of our former clients um, and uh, built this out. So this is the way that we're sort of leading off 2021 um, in a really big way. It's been rolled out already, but this is our, our big ambition for 2021 is to provide this support and assessment for as many people as possible to help people improve their everyday lives and both at work and everyone knows if your work life is better, your home life is better, your faith life is better, your community life is better. So that's our, that's our big ambitious goals for 2021. Sure is. Are we, what, what do you want us to talk about now, Bill? <laughs> Not about an hour left, so. Oh, well, <laughs> well, yeah, right? Bring out the booze and peanuts. Yeah, right. yeah, where's the beer and peanuts? What I would love to know is talk a little bit more about IXA leadership. Talk, take, us, take us a little bit into, if you were coming into our company, what would some of the steps be? What differentiates you from everybody else? You should repeat the question for the Zoom people. Oh, yes. Uh, so Bill's question is, uh, what is IX leadership and how is how do we implement it or how do we work with our clients when we're using IX leadership and how is it different than other systems that you might have uh, used or experienced in the past? Fair? Okay. Uh, so IX leadership, uh, we call it IX, which, oh, is the last slide the book? 
No, this I picked is the last slide. Oh, okay. Um, so the, the book, oh, the book was before. Jan, will you go back to the book? Okay, great. We'll see. Jan, we're going to push Jan's you're so uh, tech helpful. skills here. No wonder Bill likes you. Nice. There's the book. Okay, so the book is called IX Leadership. IX stands for Internal Experience. Yes, we know experience doesn't start with an X. We think we're being clever. Uh, the, the real reason that happened, Rachel and I, she talked about when we were in Arizona, we we're at uh, Carvana actually. Has anybody bought a car from Carvana? How was your experience? Easy, good. How was your customer service experience? Great. Their it's stuff working. is working. It's working. So they talked a lot about CSCX. And when Rachel and I, this was when we were just babies in our business, we left there after we were speaking and we said, well, that, you know, it's about your IX, your internal experience. And that's what spins the rest of uh, the experience for your customers and clients. So what we do when we engage with a client, uh, the first thing we do is ask a lot of questions, right? We have to get to know you and what your challenges are um, before we can really make any suggestions. Uh, the next thing we do is give whoever we talk to our point of contact and about four or five other people access to Helix uh, to do the culture type assessment. So we can give you your own example of probably how your people show up for each other. Uh, and then from there, the engagement is pretty bespoke. We curate it so that it actually solves your problem. Um, I would say the differentiator is not only that, but also you get Rachel and I or one of our expert consultants to work with so that you have someone helping you every step of the way. So where other management consultants or people in the consulting industry might go out and say, hey, here's seven books or here's a book and here's a binder of information and a lot of strategy that's gonna help you do the things. Um, they don't necessarily stick around for the implementation part and the, all those unspoken conversations and the ugly things people don't wanna talk about. And that's where that strategy fails, right? Strategy fails at implementation. And so what we really focus on is engaging with our clients to, to the point where they can go be successful without us, um, but making sure that we feel comfortable, but that that's actually gonna happen. So yeah, that's a little bit about how we engage. Yeah, to, to put it succinctly, which is the chapter one of our book is, we help people get shit done. We don't just say, here's the best idea. And then you're like, okay, okay here you go team, try to go do that. So we actually help you get shit done. It's not about advising, it is about advising, but it's also about identifying the actual problem you have. Because most people come to us and say, well, I can't get my people to do this thing or that thing. It must be because these seven reasons. I can promise you it's none of those. It's something else, which is the thing that we try to nail with our Helix assessment. It's that often it's just the dynamic of the team, right? It's that sort of weird space in between people that breaks down process and getting things done. So that's what we come in and help. We, we both do that we know how to actually implement project management, HR, all the frameworks, we, we do all that, but it's often about getting the people on board and knowing how to do it. That's the, that's the way that you get shit done in your company. So that's what we do. Other questions? Yes, ma'am. Mm, business development. In our own business? Yeah. How have you marketed and what was, what's been most effective? Bill Wallace. <laughs> <laughs> Good answer. Good uh, answer. Yeah. So Michelle's question was, uh, what has been your best business development strategies or sort of go-to-market approach that worked um, worked well? Well, I would say- Rachel is our networker. I'm going to let her answer this question. Yeah. Well, it's, you know, it's who you know, first of all. So the Bill Wallace answer, although tongue in cheek in this crowd is really actually pretty true. It's who you know, who your connections are. As you guys all know, you hire your friends, right? You hire people you trust. Um, but beyond that, with our global ambitions, we've been able to, we've actually taken on a little bit more traditional marketing, right? It's, it's understanding your message. Um, it's who you're selling to. Uh, for us, we, we started out with the book thinking, well, this is clearly an HR tool. It's a leadership plan, right? It's a leadership structure and a framework and they do leadership development and training. It's gonna be an HR tool, not an HR tool, not an HR, we don't do HR work. We do operations and executive level work and how that translates down into the workforce. So for us, we had to, we sell to CEOs and COOs Sometimes CFOs, because we talk, we explain human behavior and CFOs are like, I don't understand people. 
I don't know what they're doing. So, but it's, we work with the C-suite. So that was a big lesson for us is who's actually going to authorize, who feels the pain of their company not being effective and who's willing to pay the money to make that work. That's not HR. They don't have a seat at the table yet. Not at, a, not at the executive table often. So we sell to that level. So that was a big, big business development change that we learned when Meg said the run, the awkward running, that was a big part of that awkward running is who are we actually selling to? And then also what are we selling that, that we're selling? The fascinating thing is we work a lot in mergers and acquisitions because that's- Yeah, it a, sounded like you just said murders. Murders. Murders, murders. and acquisitions. Yeah. We, Sometimes we, we work for the mafia. Sometimes lot. we want to do murders. <laughs> now we do a lot of M&A work because that's a lot of big money on the table and everyone's eyes are on it. And CEOs are have huge commitments and have promised a lot of uh, progress and money savings and yeah, profitability. And so they're, they are laser focused on that. So we actually do uh, our work at, I think we're, we are pro probably most of our companies are in a major growth phase trying to hit big, big targets. <laughs> or they have M&As in, in place and it's been nine months and nothing's happened and their people are still not getting along and they don't know how to actually do the things. So that's kind of where we, that's where we ended up really focusing and that's made a huge difference. It's really about what solutions are you uh, selling and who are you selling to? And that seems so obvious, but <laughs> there's, uh, you guys know. Yeah, I think that the real magic of that was um, be willing to pay money for other people's perspective about what you're doing. Like we had some, and you know, we had somebody write our book and she thankful, thankfully, um, is very insightful and reflective and she didn't know, but she also didn't know a damn thing about business. So she's like, what does that mean? And what does this mean? So it helped us really flush out what we are getting at. Also, mar you know, marketing, working with a marketing company right now to kind of get the je ne sais quoi of what Helix is. Um, and so, that like that paying money for somebody else's perspective gets you to market faster. I, and I would have to say, because we study chaos tolerance, I'm very chaos tolerant, which means- Unfortunately, I, I can chaos be, tolerant. I can be a little bit of a squirrel, right? I'm the one who, everyone else in this room, I know you're in here. You're like, ooh, opportunity. Ooh, here's something cool. Oh, let's do this. Let's go every, every other day. I'm off on something interesting and creating some new idea and whatever. Um, Meg is less cast tolerant, although still cast tolerant in the in our system. But with the other thing about hiring people, we hire people to do the things in a way that we can't do. Right? I am a chaos person. I can't execute a marketing program. I, I'm really smart, and I just I can't make myself do it. I I let it slide. I skip it. It's do, it doesn't excite me. Now, when we were broke, I do whatever it took. But once we got some traction and we're, and we're doing better and we have money in the bank, then it makes so much more sense to pay somebody else to do that work than it is for me to try to make myself do it in an inadequate way. So the, the payment also is about deciding who can do the work that, that's not your zone of genius. So that's another, another strategy. Jan. Shelly. Yeah. On Zoom. Hi, Shelly. Is giving away Audio. Oh, she is. <laughs> of course. So Shelly's our GM. She's on the Zoom. And so she's offering a free audio, free audio book to anybody who wants one. Um, so if you're an audio book listener of our book, um, just give us your card or give it to Bill or have I'll, Bill get a hold of it. I'll take one. Oh, Bill will take one. Thank, Thank you. you. And then I think if I, if I know Shelly, I think um, she probably has a link to the book if you want to read about it more and see more about what it's about. Send yes, her send her an email. Shelly. Okay, Shelly. Shelly at rosegroupintl.com. And I'll interject right now. Thank you, Shelly. This is Bill Wallace <laughs> for helping to make this happen. This process started over six months ago and it was, well, I can get Meg there. I can get Rachel there. I said, when can you get them both here? She said, she said, let uh, me create a pandemic and then they will both exactly. be very available. <laughs> so it's all her fault. Thank you, Shelly. Yeah, so first of all, I want to talk to Bill. So no way. Are you Oh, we're co related. Give us three minutes of talking. We have family. Uh, I also texted Jeff Bezos this morning, too, because I think that's Oh, yeah, Jeff knows us. So the question I have is what your financial model is. 
So there's so many different models of consulting. So how do you guys keep contact with each other? And what does that process look like? Yeah, so the question is for you Zoomers, uh, what is our financial model? How do we make money? How do we structure um, our proposals to clients uh, so that we can stay in business? Um, let me just start by saying, shit. If there was a way to do it exactly perfectly, uh, let me know. But I, what has been the, the most successful for us are two different ways. Um, and this is our, these are our profit centers that are based out of our consulting business. Uh, so one is retained support. So you pay us a certain amount a month, you get so many hours a month of our time for advising, not so much project management or anything heavy lift, but actually executive advisory support. Uh, and that can go on for three months up to forever. Uh, the other thing, the other way that we engage with our clients, and this is, um, well, I, I guess this was more common. Now in COVID, we're seeing a lot of executives who are like, I just need somebody to tell me what to do kind of day to day. Um, so the other model that we use is proposal based. So we really get to know you, understand your challenges, understand your company, um, and then propose a solution that's um, anywhere from one week of training for frontline supervisors up to a three month or a six month engagement with an entire department or cross section of your organization to really help you implement some sort of change. So those are the two models we use for our Rose Group Consulting. Yeah, and I would say the there's a training and development uh, model, which is definitely Meg's. I'm not a trainer, I, it's not my jam. Um, I've taught a lot of college classes uh, and I don't wanna do that anymore. Meg is brilliant at training. Um, I, I prefer uh, facilitated conversations with executives, um, Everyone in this room has a very strong opinion about lots of things. And I love navigating that and coming out with an aligned decision making and that kind of thing. So it's, it ranges widely. How we scale that, so it's not just us, is that we have, um, we have a consultants that are, are 1099s to speak to financial structure, where we can pull them in. They have certain areas of expertise and we can pull them in to scale if we have a massive um, cr uh, client contract, or if we have specific verticals, like we have some medical um, experts that work with our healthcare um, clients. So that's sort of we. That's how we manage. We get to sort of pick the the ones we work with, or if they're personal contacts or friends. Um, but we spread out the um, some of the other work with our certified consultant team. So, and they're from all over the U.S. So we're not constrained to geography. Hi, geography. Wow. Can I join you all? Please. I'm worried about feedback from the mic, so I'll just, I'll just shut my you shut yours off. You oh, that's the first. I never. <laughs> she can, I don't need it. She can yell. She can yell out. Ladies and gentlemen, Rachel and Meg, thank you so much for coming back. And my note card says, first thing, Thank Shelly again. So Shelly out there in virtual land, thank you very much for helping to make this happen. Uh, so easy to work with her, amazing. Oh, yes. I know a lot of people that would probably hire her. She's much nicer than us, I was yeah. telling you. She's yeah, much nicer. Her zone of genius is kind of thoughtful. We struggle with that. We don't do that very well. You don't do that very well? No. Let me see if I can do this well. For both of y'all, this book was first given to me by Colleen Barrett when she retired as COO of Southwest Airlines. Uh, it's the book she gave to the board of directors. Uh, it's by uh, Lee and Julie Cohen, and it's The Nature of Excellence, and it is a book that describes you all. It is The Nature of Excellence, as both of you all are. So thank you so, so very much for coming. What a pleasure. Okay, we have some fun stuff. Oh, right during the presentation, Genevieve Collins called to check on me and to say hi. And said, I said, I'm in the middle of Success North Dallas. So she said, tell everybody hi. She's the one that's trying to get Pete's session seat back. And then I wanna re-remind you all of the gift cards. Uh, Denise will be up here by the American flag, $50 gift certificates for her, their wonderful, wonderful spa afterwards. And so upcoming meetings, wow. We have Mark King. <clears throat> Mark King is CEO of Volunteers of America. 
And Volunteers of America also sponsors four LPGA tournaments. And at that meeting, we're also going to have the CEO of Club Corp here, David Pillsbury, for the long-awaited 2019 presentation of the Employee of the Year for Prestonwood that we were going to do in March. And March was our 26th anniversary of meeting at Prestonwood. So this COVID-19 thing has screwed up uh, a whole bunch of things. I just hope they don't call it, start calling it COVID-21 because I'm done with this crap. Enough. Because I want to see 200 people in this room next month. And I know that we can do it. So anyway, Mark King, then December the 18th, Mitchell Levy is coming in from California. When he was here last December, we wrote a book during the meeting describing the Texas handshake and what it means. So I'm really excited about having Mitchell. We're working with uh, Dr. Ben Carson on the special event still, Jerry Jones, Ross Pro Jr. They've all committed to come. It's just a matter of lining up the calendars. I mean, the stars get in alignment for some of these people. You can only imagine. And somebody said, do you ever have a speaker cancel? And I said, yeah. Some of these CEOs travel and say, so well, what do you do? I said, we have one, two, and three backups, and sometimes none of them can do it, but we always seem to find somebody in this room that knows somebody that brings the right person to us. So it's just, and I say that in a tongue-in-cheek way of thanking all of you all. Our town halls are coming back. If you recall, our first town hall was with uh, a gentleman that was sequestered with Dr. Fushi uh, from January 4th to the second week of February, studying COVID-19 with 18 others at MIT and Johns Hopkins. And that kicked off something really good because we're gonna continue the town halls even as we come back. And the town halls are all gonna be virtual. But this particular town hall meeting will be John Barrett. John is CEO of ISSA. ISSA is the largest international cleaning organization in the world. And it's gonna be a three-part presentation. The value of the association, the trade association, and what it really means. What can be done inside of a trade association, such as they have now come up with the certification for Colosseums, large gatherings, arenas, and it's going international. And how can they give back? We also always say in C-suite, reach, relevancy, and reciprocity. What's the give back? Well, they came in and they bought Cleaning for a Reason in Dallas, Texas. Why did they buy it? They bought it with the goal of cleaning a million homes of cancer treatment patients for free. So reach, relevancy, and reciprocity. The reach of your industry, the relevance what do you do, that certification, and the reciprocity, what is your give back? So I'm really excited about that. That will occur on November the 12th, and we're calling it, at this point, the value of claim. I'm sure we'll have another name or several names, who knows. And upcoming events, C-Suite Lone Star Council tomorrow afternoon at 4.30, reach out to me, I will send you the link. And it's a free link. It's a virtual happy hour, and we have some fun on these happy hours. October the 26th, 27th, Michelle will be around. Out, will you be outside or here? Outside. outside. October 26th, 27th, 28 stars. If you want to do business with the military, every purchasing procurement head Fred from the military will be on this. It is singularly the largest gathering that's ever happened of military procurement and military brass. So don't hesitate on that one. I think you two need to be involved in that. Yeah, Shelly, make a note of that. Uh, see, I already know how to work this thing. October 28th, s and Young Executives Lunch Panel, Turning Crisis into Opportunity. And then on November the 5th, I wanna invite all of you all to this. C-Suite, Lone Star Council, we have what's called a council day. And we'll be meeting from 8.30 to 9.30. And reach out to me if you're interested. 8.30 to 9.30 on the morning of November the 5th. That's a Thursday. And 
I tell you a little bit about C-suite, but it's all about access. We've got 200,000 people involved. The Hero Club, we've got about 300. Uh, and that's just a different council level. Success North Dallas is also a council of C-suite. And if you're a Success North Dallas member, you are what's called a gold member, an access member to C-suite. If you want to know more about that, give me a holler on that. And then December the 2nd, we're going to do a happy hour at Lincoln Experience. And I'm going to come back to Randy in just a minute. We're going to do a happy hour at Lincoln Experience. And that happy hour will be a drawing because they only have a certain amount of room from all the people that have taken a test drive. Those are the one tickets and then our partner members and members. And it'll be a limited amount of spaces, but the first people that get into this will be those that are taking a test drive. There will, Darren Woodson will be there. There'll be several cowboys there. There'll be some more tickets. And I want to thank Lincoln Experience for that. And I want to tell all of y'all, we are looking for happy hour sponsors, financial sponsors of our happy hours. We have three of them coming up. We'll tell you more about those via email. And then Randy Mayhew, are you out there? I'm here. Can you hear me? Ah, we have to turn Randy on. Randy, are you good to go? I'm good to go. Can you hear me? Um, the first Friday book synopsis is on Friday, uh -oh. November. We always Hello? call on Randy. We try this. We tried this last time. Okay. Uh, first Friday book synopsis, November 6th. The business book of the year from last year. Yes, 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 yes. Invisible Women, Data Bias in a World Designed for Men, and then Margaret Heffernan, Uncharted, How to Navigate the Future. You don't need to read the books. I will give you the key content. It is on Zoom Friday, November 6th at 7.30 in the morning. Thank you, Bill. I appreciate it. Invisible, Invisible Women. women. Oh, we have people. Hey, there we go. Invisible Women and Uncharted. Okay. What is First Friday Book Synopsis? The it is the second most known. It's really right on par with Success North Dallas. Uh, it's a meeting that I never miss. Uh, you'll see, have two business books, top 10 bestsellers. He will give you a 15 minute synopsis and then he will give you a handout. I have read the books beforehand on several occasions. I've gotten more from the first Friday book synopsis than I have from reading the books and the handout. So they're doing it virtual at this point. I, they'll be going back in person to Park Cities Club, hopefully very soon. Uh, but I encourage all of you all to go take a look at that because it is a very valuable and a very wonderful uh, organization and group. Uh, let's see, we have finally, this has been rough during this time financially. So we're requesting even a, a donation, a $20, $15, $30, whatever works for you or not at all. But from the virtual aspect to keeping this going, it's uh, and the other things that we do and the other reach outs that we do. So if that's in your heart, please do so. You can do it on our website. Uh, it's very easy to get to. Uh, it's a blank amount, just whatever works for you and nothing at all. And if you really enjoyed it, really enjoyed it, stop by the desk or go online and join. $345 a year, all 12 meetings, the food you eat, the first time guests you bring, and speakers like we've had today. There's not a better deal than that anywhere. And we'll still take your donation. But, and if you haven't paid dues in a while, Jan would love for you to just send a check. Because if you're not paying dues, you're not a member. And if you're not a member in good standing, you might fall off the, the email list. And you wouldn't want to fall off our email list. So come on and help us out. Keep us going. We're all trying to come back. You notice I don't have on a tie. I normally do. But uh, this brace that I'm wearing is, I finally found a coat I could get into with it. <clears throat> but uh, I learned how to tuck a shirt tail up instead of down today. So it's been one of these fun times. Uh, like I said, you're not a member without an application. I want to do two things as we're wrapping this up. Any new members in the last 60 days or anyone in transition 
new to Dallas or interns looking for an internship, please stand up and give us your name and your discipline only. We'll go through this quickly. So if you would stand and then come down by the Texas flag afterwards and anybody with an idea for you all, come down and visit with them afterwards. So anyone new in the last 60 days in transition or new to Dallas, please stand. Start right here. Very loud. We help disabled adults get work and retain work. And I'm really glad to be here. This is my first meeting, but I did go to the first happy hour last month. Oh, you were that one. Uh, that was me. Got it. <laughs> uh, hi, everybody. My name is Liam Milligan. Uh, I'm a recent college graduate, just moved to Dallas in the middle of July. Um, I moved to Dallas for a myriad of reasons, uh, main, mainly being that I'm passionate about entertainment and music, uh, trying to carve out a space here. Um, but yeah. Welcome. And I actually jumped right in and I'm a member already. So awesome. look forward to having you as a member. Good morning, everybody. My name is Brian Rand. As I said, I'm from South Dakota originally. I just moved here from Miami, Florida seven days ago. So I'm brand new, but uh, I have a real estate investing fund here. So we have 600 units already in Dallas. We're looking to buy a couple thousand more. So I'm here to raise money and help as many people as I can. You're in the right place. Hello, my name is Mike Rochelle. I've been in Dallas for 20 years. Uh, I just joined. Uh, I do systems integration, so we're a Microsoft Gold partner, and we help your dreams come to, to life uh, through technology. Welcome. Hi, I'm Earl Browning. I've um, been a uh, computer and IT business owner in Dallas since the early 90s. And recently, I've joined a company called Mariplex, which is also IT and Microsoft, we're platinum. I'm kidding. I, I don't know what color we are. Uh, well, we're, we're also a, a computer management company as well as a telecom company. And I'm here by virtue of Neil Medway, long-term member. He also joined the Mariplex family via acquisition. Uh, Mariplex is on the move and moving all over the country. And I'm proud to be here. And Thank Neil, you. obviously, is one of our partner members. And right behind you, sir. Karen, Karen Bajani with I Hope Ministries and my husband Renaud. We just moved here from Southern California a month ago. Um, here at, as guests of Elizabeth Waters, and we come alongside the church to uh, catalyze everyday um, believers to share their faith with people of other faiths. I met you all at the Dallas Christian Prayer, Prayer Breakfast uh, you sure two did. years ago. Yeah. Fantastic. I'll walk the mic over for you, Bill. Oh, thank you. Bill, it was about 10 years That's ago, almost to the day that I walked into one of your rooms for the first time and stood up in transitions. I know your gut's going a little uh right now because I got a mic, huh? Uh-oh. I want to thank you <laughs> for building this room, bringing the speakers and these people together, and allowing me to walk in these rooms for the last 10 years. Because I'll tell you, I've been transitioning. If you remember back when I started, I stood up in transitions for probably the first six months and then I just stopped. It was getting embarrassing. You know, as most of you know, self-employment, unemployment, semi-retirement, it's all kind of the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> well, here we are 10 years later. And I'm happy to announce I have transitioned. This is my last meeting, Bill. By the time you meet next time, I will be in a different country. Where were you been, my friend? I'm finding a roundabout way to Italy. So be it. So you be still it. have to keep in touch, and I we will. will see you virtually. I want to thank you for creating this room. I want to thank you for creating something that's unique that I've ever seen in my lifetime. My favorite soundbite for you is you've created a room full of yeses in a world full of noes. Oh. Thank you, Bill. I love you, man. You've love been a you. great friend. And will continue to be. You are an excellent member, phenomenal role model. And the we've saved the best for last. Hi, thank you so much. I'm Jeannie Lewis and Bill. Thank you so much again for doing this. And um, yeah, basically, I'm I've been here 
a little over 10 years, but I'm in transition due to COVID. And, um, and so I have, I'm a marketing professional and I have, I, I do professional marketing consulting and I would be happy to uh, brand your items. I own a promotional items company. And so I can put your brand name and your logo and your tagline and any other information you want, contact information on items of all kinds, including PVE. But yeah, COVID has left me in a major transition. So there's that and I hope to speak with you. Thank you so much. And thank you again, Bill. Thank you. Okay, in transition, right down here at the Texas flag, you want a free gift certificate for 50 bucks to this incredible spa, stem cells and all, American flag, and the third Wednesday of next month. I look forward to seeing each and every one of you back here. Bring a friend. Actually, bring Greg Hicks. He hadn't been in a long time. And uh, I look forward to seeing you. So in closing, may you do what you love to do with people you love to do it with on purpose. God bless and Godspeed. Watch your emails. There'll be a Zoom uh, link for the video of this coming out this afternoon. And we love you all, and I'll see you next month. Bye. Feel free to turn on your mics and network. Looks like we're down to just a few. I was hoping. I'm I was hoping they would have the uh, uh, the camera on in the room afterwards, so I could see some of who was there. So I was. Them off. I was too. I enjoyed that last time. Yeah. I'm interested in the C-suite <laughs> network information. So if you can tell me what's the email, just the info email to receive the Zoom link for tomorrow. Uh, okay, is this, uh, can you put that in the chat, your email address and I can send it to you? Okay, sure, thank you. Okay, um, the other option is, is I can, uh, are you interested in the one tomorrow or the one next month? Or both? The one tomorrow, tomorrow, to oh. start out. <laughs> I, I'll have to see I have, if I can find it, get access to it quickly, since it's tomorrow. <laughs> I don't currently have it, but I, I can search for it. Okay. And I still see a lot of people on here. Randy, you want us to smile for that picture? <laughs> Does anybody have questions for Randy about the uh, First Friday book synopsis? I didn't know, know it was virtual. I'm going to try to go to the next one. Um, we've been doing it virtual since April. 
and uh, be glad to have you with us, Shelly. And Shelly, thanks for doing all the stuff in the chat today. Oh, I appreciate yeah. that. <laughs> I would much rather be in Dallas, but <laughs> somebody has to stay home. That's right. That's, That's right. right. That's right. Um, is Daniel LeBrod on still? I don't Daniel? think so. Let's see here. He was the other one that could answer the C-suite question. Is there anyone else on that can answer the C-suite question? I can't. Okay. Well, and we have Shelly that we can ask questions of. Does anybody have questions of Shelly about the speakers or the topics today or the assessment or the leadership or? Any of the things. <laughs> yeah. It was a great, great subject to share too. Lots of learnings in there. We, um, the COVID, we, we felt really bad about saying it at first, but our business has grown so much in 2020 that it's just incredible. I think a lot of companies that would have hired us two years from now or three years from now, COVID really sped up all of the problems that they were having and created more of a need for us right now. We're just really grateful to have all of the work and we're grateful to be able to work virtually from South Dakota all over the world and we're, I know Megan and Rachel are grateful to be in Dallas today. This is their first trip since March. <laughs> the last trip we went on, we were in Cleveland at the beginning of March when the shutdown kind of started. It was very strange to be in a city of that size and there not be any people anywhere. <laughs> right. <laughs> but if any of you would like a copy of the book, um, just send me an email and I will make sure there's not very many of us left on that. I'll mail you a copy or send you a copy of the audiobook too. And then make sure I saved the chat. I hope that's okay because I got a lot of messages that I couldn't write down quite quickly enough. Oh yeah. Everyone should save the chat before we end. Hmm. Lots of information. And then if you want to stay connected with Megan and Rachel, we do have a closed Facebook community which they do a live in that every week. And we take questions from all of our members and they answer them on the live every week. And then they also discuss current business events and what's going on in the world. It's a really valuable 30 minutes and it's free, which is good in 2020. Super. Do you have plans of also doing that on LinkedIn? I don't think so. Uh, the hair Facebook lives are pretty candid. So I... We probably, I post the replay sometimes on LinkedIn. If you go to our YouTube channel and I can post the link for that, I pull all of the, the lives that they do and they're all available on the channel. So if you want a few, or I should say tens of thousands of dollars worth of free training, you should watch the YouTube ones. I'll pull that up real quick. Okay. And then we do a lot of online webinar trainings. And when I'm able to, I also, post all of those links on our YouTube channel too. There's just a lot of really good information there. I'll pop that link in the comments. If you thought what they had to say today was interested and interesting and wanna learn more, it's a great place to start. So are those webinars routine or are they ad hoc or are they client specific or topic specific? Both, we have a little bit of everything on there. Um, when COVID first hit in March, we worked with our local economic development group and we did a I think a series of four or five webinars on team development, and they are all posted on the site. There's a lot of really good information there. Okay, good. All right. So I see that Jan has opened it up to see the rest of the room now. Are you guys looking at it? Yeah. yeah. There we go. The last time when Jan did this, he actually turned his PC left to right. And we saw ourselves in a matrix, you know, in the photo gallery mm -hmm. up on the big screens. That was kind of scary. <laughs> uh, oh, let's save that again. Okay. So we'll see if she's watching us. 
No, I just waved at her. <laughs> well, I have to I have to jump off and get on another call. Um, thank you guys all so much for joining us today, Randy. Hopefully I'll see you at the book synopsis in November. It's thank so you. nice to have virtual things to do. We are so isolated here. I'm so grateful for all of these networks. <laughs> Keeps me from going crazy. <laughs> but it was so nice to virtually meet you all and I'll see you again soon. Thanks, Shelly. Okay. Bye. And I see somebody looking at us now. So wave at him. That's Tim Dillette. All right, Tim. I'm going to cut out. Lucinda, thanks for everything. Bye-bye. All right. Thank you. Ah. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks, everybody. And we will see you next month. Same place, same time. <laughs>